Hi everyone, my name is Maeve Canelli, and I am a prevention specialist with Wayside Youth and Family Support Network. I'm pleased to be hosting this News Now Health Update with my colleague Lisa Gibellario. Lisa is a public health educator with Wayside and together we oversee Belmont Wellness Coalition. Today, Lisa is going to be sharing guidance um, for parents on how to talk to how to talk to your kids about a parent's chronic illness. So today, like I said, we're exploring the impact of a parent's chronic illness and how that may impact children. So Lisa, help us understand in what ways does a chronic illness impact um, kids? Thank you, Maeve. Uh, so we all know that raising a family is incredibly daunting. And doing so while managing a chronic illness is even harder. Kids are really inherently needy. They have physical, emotional, psychosocial needs. So it's extremely challenging for a parent to meet all of those needs while also dealing with pain, fatigue, worry, doctor's appointments, drug side effects. So to answer your question, the family system as a whole experiences more stress. The stress that impacts that family system impacts both the kids and the parents alike. And with all of that said, one thing that can be really helpful for families is to have open conversations, open communication about what's going on. Thank you. Um, when do you think it's appropriate to start talking with kids about a parent's chronic illness? Well, that's a great question. And most kids, even young ones, are aware of any cracks or vulnerabilities in the family system. So they'll worry whether or not what's going on is being talked about or not. Uh, so it's much better, even starting at an early age, Maeve, to bring the topic out in the open, discuss the illness, um, and use, obviously, developmentally appropriate terms. So if you're talking with four or five year olds, it's going to be different than if you're talking with, you know, preteens or teenagers. But if you're not having open conversations, you lose an opportunity to reassure your kids and to prepare them around what to expect. Right. And I'm wondering if you have any advice on how to have those conversations. Yes. So experts advise to choose a time when there's not a lot of chaos happening at home, when everyone's well rested. The other important point to underscore, which I raised earlier, is to use language that the kids will understand. So it's got to be appropriate to their age and maturity level. So also, Maeve, it's advised to just be honest about what's going on, name the illness, describe it, explain ways in which it might impact their lives, but also reassure them and stay positive let them talk, let them ask questions of you, validate what you hear. If you hear concerns, um, validate those concerns. And again, keep these lines of communication open. These This should not be a one-off conversation. It's a topic that hopefully you will revisit from time to time. So it sounds like definitely having these conversations with your kids and validating them a lot is important in this instance. Um, do you have any other advice for having these conversations? Well, just that kids want to feel safe and they want to feel secure. And one way to get them there is to be honest and to be open. Um, when you're not talking about it, you know, their worst fears might be running amok. So it actually offers more security to be having conversations. I would also advise parents to get the help that you can afford as much as you can afford. So help with the kids, help with housework, yard work, meal prep, shopping. Um, your plates are full enough and there's a lot going on with managing the chronic illness, medical appointments. So do all that you can do, you know, to alleviate some of those day-to-day -day chores. And finally, keep in mind that kids are really resilient um, and also, again, that they will absolutely benefit from ongoing conversations. Thank you, Lisa. And thanks for tuning into this News Now Health Update.